we get asked a lot, who was Billy Ireland and why is the library museum named after him? Billy Ireland was a longtime editorial cartoonist for the newspaper, the Columbus Dispatch. Uh, he was the cartoonist from 1898 till his death in 1935, so he spent 37 years at the Columbus Dispatch. At the Billy Ireland Cartoon Library and Museum, our mission is to collect, preserve, and make available American printed cartoon art. Our scope includes uh, graphic novels, magazine cartoons, editorial cartoons, comic strips, comic books, and sports cartoons. Uh, here are some examples of what you would find in our library. What I have pulled here are the passing show uh, pages that Billy Ireland did for uh, every Sunday. Um, and in these, you can really see sort of his style, what he, what he drew. He drew about things that, everyday things that happen uh, in Columbus, like the potholes on, pie, on High Street, you know, things that the average person could relate to and identified with. Um, in this panel over here, uh, Ireland was, um, he was a master of gentle, gentle sarcasm. He really thought that humor was a more effective instrument than anything else. And as you see here, uh, a councilman talks about he wants to fine people for sneezing in public. And he sort of wonders, how, well, how do you stop that? You know, should we wear a, a sneeze strainer? Should we uh, have a veil over our faces? So in, in this panel, you see really his civic pride in Columbus. He's saying that the magnolia trees, you know, are just as beautiful or more beautiful than the cherry tr trees in Washington. This is one of his more uh, political passing shows. This is uh, at the end of 1918, and he's kind of hoping that 1919 is a peaceful year. He draws the preceding war years as rambunctious little boys, and the globe is sort of the beleaguered father with a bunch of cuts and bruises, so he's hoping for 1919 will be a peaceful, quiet little girl. And these are some of our editorial cartoons. These three cartoons are by Sam Millay of the Pittsburgh Courier. Um, these are sort of great to see uh, the examples of an analogy of sort of satire. Uh, it also reflects Millay's own viewpoint. He was a centralist and he believed he was very loyal to Lyndon B. Johnson. He really credited him with passing the Civil Rights Bill and to sort of lead the other Democrats on why they needed to pass it, why it was important. Um, and also he drew about desegregation. Here we have James Meredith, who was the first African American to be admitted into the University of Mississippi. You have the governor at the time, Barnett, who um, tried to block him, and even a retired general tried to block him, and Sam, Uncle Sam is kind of shown as l protecting him and leading him into Old Miss, and he kind of gave these, mis these misbehaving boys a spank on the bottom for not allowing him to uh, go to the university. Political cartoons also depend on a lot of common common imagery, the symbols that we see every day. This cartoon is by Ann Mergen. She was a cartoonist at the Miami uh, Daily News from 1933 to 1956, and during that time she was the only female editorial cartoonist in the country. And in this one, you know, she's using the familiar imagery of the donkey as the Democratic Party, the elephant as the Republican Party, and in here this was drawn in the 50s where candidates Adelaide Stevenson and Truman. They're kind of, by their, their candidacy, they're both kind of pulling the party in two different directions and the Republicans are getting a laugh at it. Character is also very important in editorial cartoons and it usually takes a physical feature and exaggerates it. Here, you know, we see Churchill with his cigar. There's always sort of using the analogy that socialism is like a lion who's getting his tail clipped and sort of a reflection on World War II that now we're going to nip socialism one bit at a time. Um, why we collect these materials is they give insight into what the average person was thought about the issues of the day. Um, so we hope that in 100 years when people look at these materials, these will be the primary sources 
that they use in order to give context into any given place and time to the issues that were happening today.